And then was another uh, uh, event uh, not related to German studies, and now we are very happy to have to have you here in this building, in this very rich building, I think, um, in the uh, Center for Area Studies, founded in 2009. Okay. Um, let me introduce Naoki Sensei, Sakai Sensei. Um, he is known as a specialist on the topic um, language and politics, I would say. One of his main uh, works is to dislocate the West. <laughs> and uh, we, I should, I, I think we uh, will have the opportunity today to see that this is related to to the problem of Fukushima 2, to this problem of politics, power, knowledge, and language. And uh, before I will give some remarks on the to on the topic we will speak about today. I would like to give some uh, insights in your biography. I took it from the homepage from the Center of Area Studies. Naoki Sakai teaches in the departments of Comparative Literature and Asian Studies and is a member of the graduate field of history at Cornell University. Among his uh, many, many and very um, interesting books and publications are books like Voices of the Past, I think it was the book which made you famous um, about Japanese studies, and that, but not only Japanese studies. Uh, a book entitled Translation and Subjectivity on Japan and Cultural Nationalism, or books like Hope and Constitution, Hope and Constitution, and I guess here is written, it was published in 2008, uh, there are a lot of books afterwards. <laughs> um, yeah, the topic today, Fukushima within the configuration of the US Cold War, war strategy, the question of power in relation to knowledge production, um, Sakya Sensei will give us a report about two interviews he conducted at the beginning of this year with two scientists, scholars who had left the academic world for some reasons you will speak about and they will report about. And I hope we can have a very fruitful discussion about this because this is one of the topics we are um, interested in too uh, in the framework of our initiative text uh, initiative Fukushima we, uh, we are doing with our students and students and colleagues from Frankfurt University uh, since last year, since 3.11. So 
welcome Sakai san and we are looking forward to your yes. report. Thank you. Thank you. contexts that have been forgotten, overlooked, or even disavowed by mainstream mass media, both in Japan and outside it. The first context, which is the focal point of the first interview, are concerned with the development of what has been referred to as peaceful nuclear technology, which it is argued, ought to be distinguished from military nuclear technology. The second context, which is the, the focal point of the second interview, is about the social roles played by scientists. This is closely related to the problem of power, that is, how to understand the relationship of so-called politics and knowledge production. So let us not forget to note that both doctors Muto and Yamaguchi have deliberately steered away from the intellectual and academic careers within the institution of the university. Both at one time worked within the institution of the university. Their decisions to seek their professional and intellectual basis outside universities, corporate research laboratories, or government offices and research institutes has much to do with how they view the problem of power. I understand that both of them were attentive to these two contexts, even though each interviewee had a different emphasis this resulted in a different insights and different orientation for political actions. Since I don't have space, big space, uh, 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 to adequately explain the topics that will be addressed in, the, uh, uh, in this occasion, please allow me to summarize the contents of the interviews by presenting uh, two brief versions of, of the interviews. Actually, uh, I, I didn't have time to, to completely uh, uh, prepare the uh, subtitle of entire 
uh, interviews, uh, each of which is about something like uh, 70 minutes uh, long. But uh, I hope by the end of this summer, uh, they will be available from um, the website of Cornell University uh, uh, East Asia program. And also, I'm going to send these to, to uh, uh, Dr. Mutol's institute. Uh, it's called uh, People's Plan uh, Institute, uh, located in Tokyo. And they have their website. And also, uh, uh, Dr. Yamaguchi's uh, 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 Center for uh, uh, Nuclear, uh, Citizen Center for Nuclear uh, Information, which is again a CNIC, I think, uh, which is again has a, their, their own um, website. And I'm now that uh, I'm involved in the translation into English of uh, the one of the founding members of uh, CNIC, uh, he died about uh, already 12 years ago, uh, Takaki Jinzaburo, uh, who uh, was a nuclear scientist who established this uh, uh, movement around uh, well, introducing new concept of uh, sci scientific uh, activities and then uh, uh, politics around that time, but uh, uh, still the organization itself uh, uh, continues to, to work. So let me show you uh, the...
that strange case. Smelling of the occupation process. <laughs> uh, occupation process had certain soapy smell. It was for hygiene. <laughs> well, it's not that, that smell exactly, but uh, the, the yellowish bright displays uh, gave that impression to me. And anyway, what was it? It was the, the special group for the peaceful use of atomic energy. Uh, peaceful use. Uh, and various saying that the future is here. The future of humanity, bright future of humanity is there. That's all thanks to the great achievement of scientists of modern civilization, that is nuclear power. Actually, I, I, I was stunned and I couldn't say anything. I went through it, but couldn't understand why it is there. But at that time, I didn't go further into that issue. <laughs> I was working for, for anti-nuclear bomb movement. And bombs were micros, yeah. but not peaceful use. And so it's true. Uh, I, I, I set that aside. I, I buried that memory until the catastrophe in Fukushima. Because this exhibition, which was an international project, but brought into Japan, specifically to, what can I say, the root, the so-called nuclear karate. And uh, specifically, that should be held in Hiroshima. As a remedy, to, as a, uh, in, you, know, to, you know, to overwhelm the anti-bomb theory and the image of nuclear as a bomb to replace it with the image of a good gun. Uh, so the nuclear isn't evil, not merely evil. It wasn't admitted that it was evil. But uh, if you, you think that it is an evil, it has only the angel nature. Uh, and that's Exactly what uh, the promoter uh, Hiroshima of that event uh, told uh, Moritaki. Then Futsui said, according to, to Moritaki, we will overwhelm Hiroshima with peaceful use. And he repeated it according to uh, Moritaki. So that's a very clear. Uh, indication that it was uh, sort of uh, reflected the will of the American government or American Americans uh, to do it uh, in order to overwhelm the anti-war and, and there's a very uh, ridiculous uh, documentation about it already done by uh, by scholars but not only scholars, but NHK, the Japanese uh, sort of uh, uh, semi-state uh, broadcasting station. Uh, a few years ago already, So it was uh, 
accidental but very ironic that the day after the beginning incident, March the second, uh, fifty-four, the first uh, budget on nuclear power development was presented to the Japanese Diet by Nakasone and his friends uh, from different parties. And uh, the, in, in presenting that, uh, the, the, the person who, who proposed it on behalf of the group um, explained why Japan uh, should have nuclear, nuclear power development. They, they, they have to study nuclear power uh, generation. The reason cited that the time uh, was amazing because it was a military reason, perhaps, uh, total military reason. Uh, and he started with the, uh, with the explanation of the, how the military technology is developing. And said that uh, since the, the military technology is developing so fast, uh, we, we, we get behind, unless we train the young, young generation you know, to cope with the situation and then to enable them to handle that, such a weapon we Otherwise, uh, we would have to be satisfied with all uh, used stack weapons provided by the US under the MSA, the, mil uh, the, the Military Security Agreement, which had just been signed. So it was a, so, so explicit at the beginning. But uh, people stopped saying that after the budget that was passed. Uh, so it was only once, and at the beginning, the, the military implication was stressed. And instead, uh, there was another sort of channel which was open, that was a bigger channel, uh, where the, the, the nuclear power development itself is a material basis, the other was a legal basis. Uh, which was laid by Kishin, Kishin of uh, was fresh from Sugabo prison. <laughs> Already in 57, he was prime minister of the area. And he, he was the first one to tell me, the, the, the Arab, that uh, deciding uh, weapons uh, as uh, Having nuclear weapons as illegal uh, isn't good. Uh, he didn't say that uh, we should have nuclear weapons, but he said that ha having certain such weapons isn't against the Constitution. Uh -huh. yeah. And that concept uh, was repeated uh, after that by various, uh, by, by, by different conservative governments. So it is still the uh, official interpretation of, of, of the Constitution. Uh, um, and in that process, uh, core of, uh, of it's a political core, political industrial core of nuclear industry, uh, which is often called the uh, nuclear village or something. Uh, it is equivalent to, uh, to, to, to military industrial complex in America. Uh, in Japan, military industrial complex isn't so strong as in America. Uh, we shouldn't uh, underestimate it. But size is here possible. But the, the, the nuclear family, nuclear village, uh, nuclear complex uh, has, a, has a very, very special position in the Japanese uh, in, in society and politics. Uh, it encompasses uh, 
bureaucratic uh, power companies, uh, reactor makers, uh, scholars, and media.
それも高校生、中野の1年かそうかですか。大学へ来てみると、はい、原子力に対して批判的な見方、考え方、これが全くありませんでした。でまあ、東大ではまだ原子力効果的ていませんでした、はいはい。で、その後、大きな出来事としては、大学闘争があった。はい。はい、ダルジンザロさんはそれで、まあ、大学に行きをつける。はい。まあ、私もそうしたんですけど、はい。その時にですね、知のあり方、ダルジですね。はい。だから学問のあり方そのものに対して、はい、あの大学闘争とは、基本的に大きな、そうですね。えー、駅もしたんですけど、そうですね。で、まあ、人によっていろんな幅がありますけれども、外在は私などの研究者になりたてでこれから汗を受けて立つという、はい、そういう出発点で,です、ね、<笑>でその考え方を持ったあのそれなりの数の若い研究者の卵を取る研究者になりたい人たちは結局はですね酒井さんの、えっと、僕にも聞きたい、まあ、科学者は政府に雇われたり、企業に雇われたり、まあ、非雇用者になる、そういう立場ではない立場があり得るかどうか、はい、こういうことを真剣に検討したと思うんですね。だからそれ難しいことなんですけど、高木さんが晩年にですね、市民科学者、シティズンサインですね、はい、そのような立場に身を置いて、十分に生きることは可能ではないかということを彼は最後、出したと思うんです、はい。それに対して原子力を推進する、まあ、一つに知識人ってしまいますけど、人たちは、やはりその、いい子をさったわけですよね。<笑>で、これは酒井さんのことは、なんかありますけど、はい、その中に力学があるわけですよね。はい、その力学の中にどうしてもその縛られて、はい、つまりざるを得ないわけで、はい、で、その、まあ、大きな対立、これは、えー、生き方の問題含め、生きるですね。はい思想的な、たちももちろんそうなんですけど、含めて、農業機の対立を抱えて、はい、60年代、それからずっと今日までてきたと思いますね。で、福島311、私はその2011年3月、片上福島って言ってきましたけど、<笑>その意味するところも、一番根本にはそれがあったんじゃないかなと思いますね。その時あの非常にあの何でしょう、えー、革新の問題になってくるんですけども、まあ、これはあの昨日あるんですよね武藤本さんと<笑>インタビューしてて<笑>出てくるわけですけど<笑>つまり原子力の平和利用というあの標本自身っていうのは非常に問題が多いってことですね。まあ、あの武藤さんの考えでは、これは確実にアメリカの1950年代のアメリカの,あの総合的な、その全世界的な軍事戦略の一環として、原子力ネバティブという用語そのものが発明されていくると。もともと原発ですね。ね、そうですね。それで、でしかも、それを日本の側が非常に巧妙に利用して、そして、原子力産業を作っているという過程だと思うんですけれども、この辺についてはちょっと山口さんも、そのままでは飲,み飲めないという、<笑>それはですね、<笑>あの大まかにはそうだと思います。武<笑>藤さんが本に、最近書かれた本の賛成なんですけど、その時にですね、日本側のアメリカの戦略をきちんと理解して、というか、経理でっていうか、はい、日本の方針決めたら、あれだったんでしょうかね。どういうグループだったのかということを考えたときに、物理学
くしちゃったんですよ、女性だからとか、うんうんうん、それ非常に気になるので、はいはい、で武藤さんのあの本というか、武藤さんの考えの中で、多分その辺のこう視野はあもともと武藤さんの分野は違いますか、物、う、理、んうんうん、や私じゃ、まあ、あげられませんけども、あのからするとですね。本当にそのアメリカ核戦略に対して、日本側が応答応じた、そのグループの中に、科学者がいたのいや、それを僕はちょっと山口さんにお聞きしたいんですけど、少なくとも戦争中は、日本の物理学者が、はい、そのどこまで実現可能性まではいかない人がおうかは知りませんけれども。円楽団の構想は特にそうですね。で、みんな、はい、あの、向きがってたわけですよね。ですから、その限りでは、はい、日本の国家戦略に対して、もうすでに、はい、あの、原子、えー、ニュークリアサイエンスを通じて、関わってる物理学者というのは、もうかなりがっちりと、ほとんど全部じゃん。そうですね。ですから、戦後になってね、はい、あれだけ、はい、あの、日本の物理学が成果を生むわけですけれどもね。はい、そうすると、その段階で、例えばこの今度のアメリカのね、それが起こってきたときに、物理学者がそれに乗っかるということは別に意外ではないというような気がするんですけれども、あのー、お声をかけたんですけど、いろいろ調べてみると、湯川秀樹さんが若干抵抗したというか、自粛的自粛ああ、そうですか、ね。はいはいでもそれは本当に若干の抵抗でどこまで深く考えたか分かりませんけれどあの核武装をする核爆弾の研究をするということについては日本の科学者たちはほとんどみんな反対したと思うんです、うんはい、だけど平和利用についてはいろんな方なかったんですね少なくとも科学あるいは知識に携わる者たち自身がいまだにあの最終的な自分たちの倫理の,あの根拠として国に対するあるいは国民に対する修正とか国民に対する献身という形でしかあのまだ物が考えられないでいるということはこれはかなり深刻な問題ではないかと思うんです、ね、本当にそう思うんですね。で、教育の中身っていうのはね、あのそれ大きな、少なくとも日本で行われてる教育っていうのは大きな障害になってるんですね。はいはいはい、あのここに、すごい手があったんですけど、これはですね、アメリカの初等理科の教科書、ホールトサイエンスという教科書。その中に1990年代だったアメリカはちょっと見てみてみてあなたどう思うか、うん
次の四つの問いにしたのは完全な文章に答えなさいという<笑>切断場であってですね,ねあのアトミックエナジーっていうのはどういうものかな、うん、それからどういうメリットとデメリットか、はい、そういうの日本ではどこでもこういう距離がないんですよね市民社会の,、はい、その健全にと考えたら、はいね、都合の悪い内容は隠すではダメなんですよ、はい、今回その露骨に出たねんですよね、はい、ずっとそういう考えで国家官僚や行政の責任者がやってそうですからね,そうですねもうおろとろするばっかりだったんですよ、はい、でスピーデーの結果なんて早く出すべきだったらさなかなか非常に暇増えたんですね、はい、そういうことをあれこれ考えますとやはり利便性だとか物質的なトミナとかいないですか、はいねまあ、利便性の中に工業的時間っていう概念もあるんですが、はいはい、それは一つの国民国家の中で考える時代はもう、はい完全に終わったんだそうですよね。生命系こそがこれあの人だけではなくて、はい、あのバイオダイバーシティというかね、はい、それを含めてこの地球上の生命系そのものに一番重要なポイントがあるんだということを早くか教材そうしてんでこういう形を育てることによって。そのやがては科学者が、まあ、倫理の問題になるのときに、基本的な歯止めになるかもしれないっていうぐらいの状況を持つんですね。そう,、ねはいねはい、そうしたときに、大学の大御さんが言ってたの、市民カー、はい、市民の立場で、市民の目線で、市民の暮らしの中で、サイエンスを捉え直すということも生きてくるわけです。日本の教育と、まあ、これはあの重なる部分が非常に大きいんですけれども、今後のことでよりはっきりしたもう一つの点というのは、日本のマスメディアの役割というのがあると思うんですよね。はいまあ、これが実はあの今回だけじゃなくて、もうすでにもう10年ぐらい前から言われていることで、でえー、これについてはあの何,度何度も私も感じたんですけれども、もうすでにはっきり。あの海外の新聞なんかで言われているのは、日本のマスメディアの新聞記者が、彼らはスパイですっていうんですね。ああ。彼らには背骨がない、つまり、ぐにゃぐにゃしてて、はい、何にも方針もなければ、じ事故としてもちゃんとした見解もなくて、ただぐにゃぐにゃ、その、非常にその場その場でもって、あのセンセーショナルになんて言ったり、えー、金儲けにつながるような、ね、題材に。わーっと飛びついてでしかし、じゃあ、金持ってだけのものにでもって一貫して突き抜けるのかって言ったら、押さえてくると、すぐ引いちゃう。で、あの調査をしない。で、書類調査で分かることでも出してこない。はい。いうような意味での、そあのいわゆる非常にソフトな形ですけども、そういった意味での,あのマスメディアの持ってる、えー、なんて言うんでしょうね、芸能性と言いますかね。まあのその市民社会にとっては絶対に必要な、はい、あの役割、それが今回のことについては、日本の,あの大臣は全部やるんじゃないかという気がするんですが、ねはい、NHK も含めて、最近、少しかも、NHK が一歩半歩も、ね、もう、どうでもだめですから、はいと、まさにおっしゃる通りで、この問題については、私たちも頭の中の,あの NHK が。今3・1直後からの東大の五葉学者図を書いてまして、ですね<笑>あれはあの財産たちが作り上げた我々を作っている人の、ひらがなの目かっていうと、まあ、とんでもない人生を、<笑>そうでしょ、全体に。でも NHK はずっとやったんでしょうね。どんな処理してるんですかね。それともやっぱり温存されてるんですか。なるほどだ。わかりませんけど。<笑>えっと
東京新聞っていう地方紙があって、はいはい、それに関してずっと編集部に対して僕に取材をして、うん、批判をしたり記事を書いてるんですけどマスコミ日本の大マスコミに入る若い人っていうのはみんなそれなりに学生時代、うん、その優秀であって、うん、特徴があってそれでその世界に行ったわけですよ、はい、そうしたっていうのはおしなべでそうなっていく構造みたいなものは、はい、やはりやっぱでしょうね。Yeah,、uh, we are running uh, out of time, so、uh, let me just、uh, uh, point out some of the, the, the、uh, problems. I'm going to say, 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 Uh, it's embedded in the history of, of uh, uh, well, particularly the relation between the、uh, uh, United States and Japan. And then、um, there's another aspect to his argument that is to say,、uh, precisely because of the United States occupation of Japan, in fact, the tradition of Japanese empire survived. And it's,、uh, I have done my, some work uh, uh, showing it、uh, on a historical basis, too. So,、um, during that period, the idea of、uh, peaceful use of、uh, nuclear energy was、uh, introduced. And、um, because、uh, at that time, negative images of nuclear energy.、Uh, And、uh, United States military domination of the world through、uh, nuclear energy or nuclear weapons、uh, was a very, very important、uh, issue for、uh, United States、uh, global strategy.、Uh, probably you've heard of the、uh, Japanese films,、uh, well, I, I don't know, more than 20 of these、uh, were produced, but、uh, Godzilla. And Godzilla was. Clearly, well, uh, uh, Dr.、Um, Muto mentioned it, it's uh, uh, the nuclear、uh, experimentation in the Pacific, which is, Godzilla was really the,、uh, at that time,、um, uh, cinematic sort of a symbolization of, of that movement itself, which、uh, made American uh, uh, policymakers extremely uneasy. Hence, the,、uh, they deliberately planned. And in order to do so, they relied upon the very, very conservative uh, uh, forces within Japan. And then, of course, uh, uh, you can see that the,、uh, their policy was already formulated within the context of Cold War. Therefore, in order to、uh, avoid the、uh, rapprochement, actually, The possibility of rapprochement between、uh, Japan and China in the 1950s and then uh, uh, early uh, 60s, uh, United States uh, uh, policymakers deliberately tried to revive Japanese empire in East Asia. So, which is very closely related to the contemporary problem, which is、uh, again another aspect of、uh, Dr. Muto's discussion. Which is the、uh, continuation of the emperor system, which is exactly the、uh, emperor system uh, while, uh, had actually nothing to do with uh, uh, conservative politics within Japan, because already during the war, the United States decided that they are going to continue the emperor system in Japan, not for the sake of、uh, J- Japanese public, but for the sake of occupation. because And then、uh, recently we saw in, 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 in Iraq the complete failure of American occupation policy because the United States dismantled the whole symbolic structure of, of, of、uh, Iraq. And as a result, the、uh, rebellions and, and disorder 
spread. Uh, while the, the uh, United States was most afraid of the internal conflict within Japan. And they immediately grasped the chance of controlling Japan and the uh, emperor. So emperor was a very, very important tool of, of uh, uh, the United States. And of course, uh, at that time, policy makers were learning the mistake Japanese made in China. That is, militarily Japanese occupied China, yet Japanese could not rule. Hence, uh, a civil war uh, was uh, rampant there. And then, as a, uh, eventually, uh, Japanese uh, uh, were uh, defeated in China. So, uh, one point emphasized by uh, Muto Ichiro is the ongoing political manipulation of public image of nuclear uh, power. And I'm afraid it's coming back now in Japanese mass media very much. This could not be limited to Japan for, uh, in a variety of ways, image of nuclear energy has been the site of controversy in many countries in the world for more than six decades, ever since the devastation of the uh, cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki was known to the world. Dropping of atomic bombs marked the emergency or emergence of something entirely unexpected and despite strict censorship imposed by the United States, the sense of its monstrosity could not be confined to only Japan or among uh, Hibakusha so called that those victims exposed to the radioactivity released by the nuclear weapons. The global spread of news did not happen instantaneously, but neither did it take long for people in many parts of the world to realize that humanity was exposed to the knowledge of first successful implementations of nuclear uh, weapons of mass destruction. That was made possible by the emergence of this monster called nuclear technology. Muto Ichio participated in the, uh, as he said, in the anti-nuclear movement in the 50, 1950s and worked for the uh, uh, Japan Council against atomic and hydrogen bombs before the factional dispute fragmented the organization into two uh, in 1965. Since, since 1965, actually, anti-nuclear movement was very, very weak in, 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 in Japan for a variety of reasons. So he saw this uh, incident and, and, and uh, he witnessed the actual uh, uh, deliberate effort by the, the uh, American uh, official stationing in Japan to promote the image of uh, uh, the uh, peaceful use of uh, uh, atomic energy. And the interesting thing is that, the, uh, surprising enough, um, uh, this effort, in fact, coincided with the uh, continuing uh, effort on the part of, what should I say, well, uh, uh, Buto Ichio called it uh, one of the three pillars of post-war Japanese state, which is the effort to revive Japanese empire, pre-war empire. And that uh, uh, tradition uh, uh, continued to, 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 in fact, support the uh, nuclear uh, industry, nuclear technology, and nuclear uh, 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 scientists. And then, in, in this regard, the, uh, he pointed out, as you, uh, as you saw, that the political aspect of what is usually referred to as a nuclear village has, in a sense, origin in uh, Cold War. And then today, I think, the distinguishability of peaceful uh, uh, nuclear technology and military technology has been con constantly uh, uh, programmed because it is, in fact, almost impossible to differentiate two aspects of it. And I, I think this is the, the very closely related to uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Muto's work. He's been working in, in uh, the 
question about migrations in, in uh, uh, East Asia, and of course uh, he's been uh, very much involved in uh, discussion of human rights in, 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 in Asia and, and, uh, and uh, the political, uh, well, that's why he established the, uh, the institute called uh, People's Plan, that is to say, he is very much instrumental in creating a uh, transnational network of uh, grassroots political movement. But we don't have much time, so let me move on to the, the second part of the uh, interview. This is another more, more sort of a specialized like aspect in which the individual decision making uh, matters more, and it, it is probably more uh, theoretically uh, oriented towards the question of knowledge production and power. And it is interesting that in 1960s and 19, uh, early 1970s, some students, but it, it's interesting, not the, the students from uh, social science departments or humanities, but in fact from uh, particularly uh, physics, became very, very sensitive to, to the question of knowledge and political power. And they began to question the issue of power, power in knowledge production. The manner of the problematizing, the relationship between power and knowledge, was in fact very different from the, the classical view of knowledge and, and power. The classical view of knowledge assumed the objectivity of scientific knowledge and believe that autonomy of scientific reason must be maintained against the external coercion. Implicitly, it upheld that science scientists should be an autonomous citizen of national society and he, well, at that time, the majority of scientists were uh, uh, male, he should be somewhat internalized the sense of responsibility for the nation as a whole. Then, at the time, there's a completely different mode of, of argumentation, and that different, different spirit, in fact, reflected on the way the student movement in 1960s late 60s was uh, formulated. Despite the increasing influence of industry and government funding, many scholars and intellectuals, actually majority of them, maintained that in order to sustain the objectivity of scientific knowledge, university as the most important site where scientific knowledge is produced must be protected from external political influence and uh, must maintain its autonomy. But those stu new students' movement actually challenge this idea of autonomy of the university. And at that time, many scientists in physics and, and, and uh, uh, related uh, fields used uh, the, the case of, some of you, some of you might, might, be, might know this, that it's a, there is a, a, a group called Jason Advisory Group in the United States. Have you ever heard of it? Jason Advisory Group is a group of scientists, including Nobel uh, laureates, top class scientists, and acted as an independent body for the United States government, particularly the Department of Defense and Intelligence, the CIA, and other related departments. They are independent. They were not bureaucrats. Therefore, they can issue new ideas and, and, uh, and, 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 and uh, new technologies and so forth rather freely. Uh, uh, independent of the governmental uh, uh, policies. Irony is, 
as a very conscientious scientist, they in fact introduced a number of technologies which were in fact used very, very uh, effectively at war, including war in Vietnam. For instance, very specific use of scientific or uh, uh, pharmaceutical uh, uh, substances in order to deal with uh, uh, the guerrilla warfare. And what was striking at that time was so-called independent and conscientious scientists voluntarily collaborated or contributed to the state policies as a result of which their suggestions and inventions were resulted in very devastating, basically it's a, 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 a sort of war crimes. Here, I think um, these students who were working at that time uh, pointed out these two issues. That is, scientists independently, autonomously help the government's technological and scientific policies, including uh, uh, military and, 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 and intelligence policies. Two, scientists, these scientists, suggesting many inhuman technology and uses of science in the name of the nation's welfare protecting nation against uh, potential enemies. A number of people, including, of course, they are a, a, sort of a minority within industry or a, a, a scientific field. A number of people, including Takaki Jinzaburo, who, who was the, the established, this is uh, the uh, Citizens uh, Nuclear uh, Information Center. Uh, and Yukio Yamaguchi, whom I interviewed, began to question the social role expected of a scientist and an intellectual. The question of rationality and civilized individual ensued. You have to start questioning what is the, 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 uh, the basically the, the ethical basis of scientific rationality and so forth. What that had to be called into question was the assumption that when left alone, scientific knowledge is independent of political power. Is, in fact, left alone, is scientific knowledge independent of political power. Classical view of knowledge and power upheld the professional individual embodying the sense of the nation as a whole who serves the universal interest of the society and prestige of the university was based upon the fact that it is an intellectual community consistent, consisting of such conscientious individuals. Then student movement was organized on an entirely different view about scientific the university should not be placed outside the context of political struggle. Instead, university must be the place of political struggle because it is in the production of knowledge that modern political power constitutes itself. It is impossible to separate knowledge from power. And that is a kind of a, um, a basis uh, uh, that uh, continues to motivate, I think, uh, the people at uh, uh, Citizen Center, uh, our Citizens Nuclear Information uh, our Center. And that's what uh, I think uh, uh, Dr. Yamaguchi uh, mentioned. In fact, what he saw after the, the uh, Fukushima incident is the continuation of this activism. That is, continuation of these two different uh, 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 views uh, about the uh, question of knowledge and, 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 and power. Well, uh, we talked about uh, other things, and particularly, I think, 
uh, he referred to the Dr. Takagi's notion of citizen science, and, and again, that, uh, I wanted to ask him more about it because what he meant by citizen. And then uh, he also uh, referred to civil society, and I wasn't sure what he really meant by, or he, uh, how he conceptualized uh, civil society. But um, the, I hope that you will uh, probably uh, have time when the, the complete version of interviews uh, uh, will be, uh, well, available uh, towards the end of this summer. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. 